We're gonna wait one more minute in case there's any latecomers. If you just joined us, now's a good time to cut your squares if you haven't already. You'll need two that are six inches by nine inches and two pieces of elastic that are both seven inches. Good thing about it, Mom. You know, it's a good thing about it. Okay. All right, Janet, I'm going to start. Are you still there, Janet? Okay. All right, I'm going to get started. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Callan Duke, and um, I'm going to um, give you some options for making masks uh, for cloth masks. And um, welcome. It's nice to see everyone. Um, I wanted to start with a quote uh, because the reason we're making the mass and this difficult time um, can be a little blue and um, we're listening to the news, it's easy to feel down. And I ran across a quote by Fred Rogers that I've been uh, revisiting to make myself feel a little bit better in these times. And he said, when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. And I just thought that was a really good quote for our times because um, we've got all of the healthcare workers who are putting their lives at risk every single day, helping us um, to keep us safe. And, and down to the um, people who work at Stop and Shop, the checkout people, the people stocking our shelves so that we can eat, the farmers, delivery people, people at Amazon. So it's, there's lots of helpers out there in our community right now. And how exciting for us that we get to find a way to help the helpers. And that's by making the masks. So um, I'm really excited that we have this opportunity to do this. I'm gonna start with a little bit of housekeeping. Um, and then we'll get into the actual sewing. And I'm really hoping people can sew as we go. So this isn't just a, you know, telling you and then you go back and do it later. So we're gonna sew as you go. So if you haven't got your pieces ready while I'm doing the housekeeping, that's a great time to do it. You'll need two pieces of cotton that are six inches by nine inches and two pieces of um, quarter inch elastic that are seven inches. And we'll talk about alternatives to that as we go, uh, but that's the basis of what we're gonna do. Um, so a little housekeeping, Janet has put um, in the chat, Janet has put her email and she's going to share some PDFs and pictures with the group. And if you would like to see them, you can email her. She's also going to put it on um, Facebook. Janet, which Facebook are you going to put that on? It's in the event um, in the Athenaeum. Okay. Awesome. Um, and um, so, so there's going to be some alternative ways of doing this that we'll touch on. And if you want more uh, instructions on how to do that, that's what that, um, those attachments will be. And also you'll have the instructions of what we're doing today written out so you can share with people and practice at home. So you don't have to remember everything. <laughs> All right. Um, also, I'm guessing at this point, everyone has been using Zoom ad infinitum, but just to go over a few features that we'll use today. Um, the first is, um, because I'm imagining people are gonna be sewing while we do this, if everyone could mute their mics, so we're not hearing a bunch of machines, that would be awesome. Um, and you, if you don't know how to do that, you go to participants, and then you go to mute me, and that'll mute your microphone. Callan, as the host, I can actually go ahead and mute everyone. Oh, okay. So I'm going to mute all, but if you um, hit that little microphone, you'll unmute yourself. Perfect. So if you have a question, go ahead and do that. So I'm going to do that now. Right here. Okay, and let me unmute you. Hold on. I'm going to unmute you, Callan. Uh, where'd you go? Uh, what's your name, Callan? Oh, Meg, right? Yep. 
I'm oh, using it. Okay, so I just, I just <laughs> unmuted myself. So um, in the participants, if you click on participants, um, you'll see your name. And if you do the hand raise feature, that's, that's how I'm, um, one way we could do questions. Um, the other is you could just unmute yourself and ask. And then the other thing, I'm gonna see if people are following along okay. And it's hard, as you guys know from Zoom, to hear everybody all at once. Um, so I might just ask for a thumbs up. And this is kind of a fun feature if you haven't seen it already. If you go to reactions um, down at the bottom, there's a clapping hands and a thumbs up. So, you know, I might say, has everyone done this step? And then you could just do a big thumbs up. Um, you can also just do thumbs up, but it's nice to kind of see where everyone's at. Um, and then unclear your thumbs up. Whoops. Well, I'm super thumbs up. Hmm. <laughs> All right. I guess I'm gonna stay thumbs up. Um, so um, yeah, let's get started. Um, First thing that you should start with, and this really doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, as I mentioned on the, the library website, this is a really great time to repurpose, especially since you know we're not going out and shopping. So um, cotton sheets are great, pillowcases are great, um, tablecloths, anything that's cotton. Um, they're saying 100% cotton, and I'm sticking with that, and also tight weave is important so looser things like linen i'm not sure that it would work so you're going to want two six inch by nine inch squares so when it's uh raw raw and not sewn six inch by nine inches um does everyone have that can you guys all give me a thumbs up if you have the six inch by nine inch because i'll give you some time to cut it if you haven't done that so can I get a show of thumbs who has, is ready to move on to the next step? Augusta, I see that you're ready. Anyone else? Um, so I, do people need more time? I'll, I'll give you another, like a minute to cut your squares in case you haven't done that yet. And then also, um, maybe cut your squares, but not your elastic. You'll also need two seven inch pieces of quarter inch elastic. Again, we'll talk about alternatives to that, but we're starting with that today. Okay, I'm gonna move on assuming everybody has that. Um, so the first thing that you're gonna to want to do is you're gonna to wanna to put the two pieces, sorry, it's kinda of hard to see me, put the two pieces of cotton together. If you've ever made a pillow, you're basically making a pillow that you're not stuffing. So you're gonna to wanna to put the two pieces of cotton together, right sides together as if you're making a pillow. And then you're gonna to wanna to take your elastic and pin it into the corners. So the elastic should be pinned into the corners at all four corners. And it should be as close to the edge as possible but not sticking out because the more elastic you stick out, the more, um, the shorter that it'll be. Sorry, when I said all four corners, what I mean is, this is really hard to see, but you pin at one corner and then you loop to the other corner and then you pin it down. So I'm gonna show you what it will look like on the inside so it's a little easier to see. So it's gonna be pinned on the inside kind of like this. with the other piece on top of it. And then you'll do that at the other corner as well, the other side as well. It's 
give me two seconds. Um, for people who sew a lot, um, Meg, my friend Meg, whose house I'm in and computer I'm using, is she just puts the elastic in as she goes. Um, you can do that as well if you're comfortable, but the pinning kind of helps let us know uh, where it is. Uh, thumbs up if you've gotten to that part where you've pinned both of your corners, sorry, both of your edges are pinned like this with the other piece on top of it. Awesome, I see one person's ready to go. So you're, you're, it seems kind of counterintuitive, but you're tucking the elastic. It's gonna be inside uh, when you're sewing. Anyone else uh, figured out how to do that? Do you have questions? I know it's a little hard to see. Okay, again, I'm going to assume since I'm not hearing from people that we're gonna go ahead and sew that. And I'm not sure, I'm gonna be a little backlit because my machine's um, over here, but we're gonna give it a try. And you go ahead and sew along with me. Right, and so when we sew, like I said, it's sort of like we're sewing a pillow. Um, you're gonna want to sew around the edges with the right sides together, with catching in the elastic. And I would sew about uh, putting the edge of the foot on the edge of the fabric, which works out to be about a quarter of an inch or four eighths of an inch. Um, the more, the, the wider your seam allowance, the less elastic you have, right? Because it takes in more elastic. And some workers have been saying, you know, healthcare workers have been saying the elastic kind of hurts their ears. So we don't want that super tight. So I would just make sure you're catching the elastic and just put the edge of the, um, the edge of the foot on um, the edge of the fabric. You're gonna wanna leave, just like with a pillow, you're gonna wanna leave a little open space and one of your long ends of your, um, square. So it might be a good idea to start at one of those edges and work your way around. So if this was, sorry, the lighting's so bad. Like if I was sewing around here, I might start here and sew all the way around and then end up here. So I have this gap right here to turn it right side out. Hopefully that's making sense. I really uh, encourage questions or comments if you're confused. All right, so you're gonna sew along with me. <laughs> um, I'm gonna mute my microphone just for now and feel free to sew around the edges of your rectangle. And just like any sewing classes as you're going, if there's a question, uh, please raise your hand or turn on your mic and ask a question.
How's everybody doing? Thumbs up if you're doing good. All right, um, I'm gonna move along, assuming that everybody's uh, gotten to the stage. So you should have something that looks like this, which is the elastic tucked inside and the two sides together. Now you're gonna to wanna to turn it right side out. So you're gonna push all of the fabric and the elastic into that hole and turn it out again. If you've ever made a pillow, it's really the same concept. We're just not gonna stuff it. So something I read the other day is that um, the CDC is thinking about recommending that people wear this their uh, face masks all the time. So when you're making for healthcare workers and you know even people who are working at the grocery store and maybe at restaurants, maybe make a few for your family or for yourself um, because it's not just about protecting ourselves from other people um, you know when we go out we could of course be accidental unknowing carriers of COVID-19 so it's also protecting respiratory droplets from getting out and us accidentally infecting other people um, so you should have something that looks like this it's starting to look more like a mask now Does anyone have any questions? Now is a great time to ask questions. All right, well, let's move along. So um, just like with the pillow, we're gonna want it, we don't want that open bit. Although a friend of mine, He's making his with this opening um, a little wider so um, people can put in um, filters or other cloth for more protection. So that's an option. I haven't seen that yet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sew it closed shut. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew all around the edge with using the same distance of putting the edge of the foot on the edge of the fabric. But I like to really um, go back and forth at the corners, right? Because this is what's holding the elastic in place. So we're gonna go around once now, we're gonna go around a couple times later, but just to really make sure that elastic's um, strong at the corners, because that's where all the, um, you know, where it's being pulled at a lot. So we're gonna go ahead and if you are, um, some people are a little more uh, precise about this, you can also, when you're making this, yourself, this is a good time to iron it flat, you know, so both sides are flat. I like to just kind of press it um, and have it look nice, but you can also iron it. So that works as well. So I'm going to go ahead and sew around the edge just the one time with it completely open and flat. We will uh, make pleats later, but right now we're just doing flat. So let's do that together.
All right. Um, please feel free to ask questions uh, or raise your hand or just speak out if you have questions. I'm just going to assume people are getting this unless I hear otherwise. Now you should have a finished piece. See my stitching along the edge that looks like a mask without the pleats. Go ahead and trim all of your strings. And don't worry about how clean your cotton is because the hospital, just to be safe, they do high, um, high heat washing and drying. So all of this will be sanitized. So uh, save yourself some water and some electricity. And unless your cotton's really gross, don't, uh, you don't need to wash it. All right, and um, something I like to think about just for fun for the healthcare workers, because I think um, their days can probably get a little grim. Uh, think about the most beautiful or whimsical or fun part for the outside. I've used the same fabric on either side. You could also do uh, plain cotton on the inside and save your nice fabric for the outside. Um, but think about just a little touch, what would be kind of fun for uh, the person wearing the mask, because we can still have a little beauty in these tough times. So I'm gonna put this side on my, as my outside. So now we're gonna do the pleats. Um, what you've ever done pleating is the same as regular pleating. Um, the only caution I would throw out there is when you do the pleats, um, sewing through them could be a little rough. So if you have a needle right now on your machine that's for lightweight fabric, you might wanna switch it out for cotton or for um, jeans. It's not essential. You just might have to work your um, sewing wheel through the steps, but we'll, we'll work through that together. I wanted to show you some other fun fabric. This was a dress that I had that I thought was a little too loud, but I'm making masks out of it, something fun for people to wear. All right, so we're gonna do the pleats. And you can do it two, two different ways. You can just eyeball three pleats, um, which is what I like to do. Or you can, um, a friend of mine, he measures two, four, and six and puts little dots there as the apex of the fold. You can do it either way. But you're gonna want to make three pleats along like this. And if you find that you get to the end and you don't have enough room for your pleats, you're gonna wanna do it again. So they're not very deep pleats. My uh, pins are out of um, computer reach, so give me two seconds. Sorry about that. All right, so you're gonna want to pin your pleats. Does anyone have any questions on the pleats? You're gonna do three on each side and they're gonna wanna be in roughly the same place on both sides. This allows the mask to kind of open up and expand. Um, so it's not just a flat, flat against people's face, gives them a little room to breathe. There's a lot of different um, models out there. Um, there's also a model where you can sew, uh, when we are turning it right side out, you can take a twist tie or a piece of um, pipe cleaner and put that on, on the nose part so you can kind of pinch it closed for even more uh, security. That's another way to do it. <clears throat> so I've got one side. Right, our side should look sort of like this. 
and then go ahead and use those folds as a guide for the other side. Again, um, depending on how um, particular you are in your sewing, you might want to uh, iron it shut. Some people like doing that to ensure that the folds are even. I'm just going to eyeball it. So as you're doing this, you can kind of see why you'd want um, a heavier needle or to be a little more careful with the sewing because you've got so many layers. Any questions at this point? Feedback? <laughs> Hi. Can Hi. I ask a question? Um, hey, yes, were, please. What, what Hi. The Hi. Yeah, I'm Pat. <laughs> yeah. What were the numbers for the pleats again? Oh, so roughly, and you know, play this out, two, four, and six. Is that right? Okay. Great. Yep. Thank you. That might not be right, Pat. Hold on a second. Because when it's finished, it's not going to be six. It's going to be about five. So I would maybe do one one inch apart. You could do like one and a half, um, three and four and a half. How about that? Okay, thank you. And then when you if you do it that way, thanks for your question. I appreciate it. If you kind of pinch at the the dot and make that your apex, that's right. that's how you do it that way. Thanks. Thank you. All right. So, and you're fine on video, I don't mind, but if you want to be off video, Pat, you're still on video, which is totally fine. <laughs> All right, so now um, if everyone's pinned their, um, their um, sides, we're going to sew through. And what's really important when you sew through the edge is that you're sewing with the folds, not um, discouraging them. And I'm not really... Um, it's kind of hard to see, but I'm going to be wanting to sew, so I'm encouraging the folds, not going against it and opening up the folds as I go. And so that means you're going to have to take this out and turn it around for the other side. But we're going to make a sweep all the way around again, all four sides. So however and whenever you decide to turn it, maybe when on one of the long sides, turn your fabric at some point so you're sewing with the folds on both sides and please ask if that's not clear. So we're gonna do that now. We're gonna just sew around once, all four sides catching in the pleats. And as you go, depending on your machine, I think it's always a good idea to kind of take out your pins as you go. So before you get to them, pull it out because we don't want any broken needles. The beauty of doing this at home is that my dog is here, <laughs> so he's taken over my spot. All right, so we're going to sew through those folds one time all the way around the edges, again with the width of your um, sewing machine foot on the edge of the fabric. And I'm going to mute myself. Also something I forgot to mention, if you want to start um, a little farther out, we're going to sew again. So if you're having a hard time catching the folds um, with the foot up against the edge, it's okay to go in a little bit because we're going to go back and go closer.
but don't panic if you're not done, but just while you're on your machine. Now go ahead. And so one more reinforcement round around the edge. It can be exactly on the um, stitches that you just did, or if you had kind of gone a wider seam allowance before, now's the time to put the edge of the foot on the edge of the fabric. So go ahead and do that one more time around your mask. All right, so I'm going to trim my threads. If you're not done, just keep sewing. All right, so I've decided I'm, I don't have a mask for myself, so I'm gonna use mine for myself. I wouldn't recommend doing this with something you're gonna give away, but it should look, it'll look. Like that, you can see how the pleats kind of open up to make a nice big uh, round bit in the middle. And like I said before too, um, you could, before you stitch up that kind of pillow you made in the beginning, slip in a a twist tie like these you know twist ties you got with your um lawn bags or whatever and put that at the nose part and maybe zigzag over that to keep that in and then you can pinch it shut like this right and have a little pinch shut at the nose um, other people are saying pipe cleaner works as well um, and that's just one more little feature to make it nice and tight so this is the basic mask um, as I said, some people are um, saying that it's been hurting their ears. So I'm going to show you how to do a little, what's our time? Are we doing okay? Okay, we have time. Um, show you how to do um, cloth ties. And you, it's the same principle, except for, um, I'll show you. It's the same principle. So the cloth ties, and maybe you have made these before, um, what you're going to do I'm going to give you measurements. So if you have a pen, be ready. You're going to cut um, 18 inch by one and three quarter inch up to two inches, but I would say one and three quarter inch fabric. So it's 18 by one and three quarter. And then I'm going to show you on a piece of paper because I think that's actually easier. What you're going to do with the, the piece of fabric. So if we're pretending this is the long 18 inches this way. I'm gonna fold it in half once and create a center line. And if you're using cotton, the nice thing is you can just kind of fold by hand and it'll make a nice crease. Or again, if you want to, this is a great time to use an iron and flatten it out. And then you're gonna to wanna to open it back up. That's your center line. You're gonna fold the sides in like so. The idea is that we're catching in all the raw edges, right? And then we're gonna fold it again like this. Right, so we have center seam and then folding into the center seam 
and then folding again. And then I'm gonna to wanna to take the widest um, zigzag that this piece will um, take and just catch all four of those edges in. And then I'll make this a nice long, this is my, I don't know if you see it, my cotton tie. And those instructions Janet has, and she's um, put them up as well. But the way you would sew that is you'll have four of these per mask. So you need four pieces that are 18 inches by one and three quarters. So I've got my one, two, three, not done, but four, right? And I'm gonna wanna put those in the corners, just like I did with the elastic. This takes a little more dexterity because you kind of have to, you put the edge along the corner of the fabric, but then you have to kind of ball this up. There's also some instructions being sent on how to make one big long piece that you sew on the outside of the mask. So it's just sort of personal preference which one is less fiddly for you. Um, so you can either, again, make these little 18 by one and three quarter inch strips and use in the corners and kind of ball them up or look at that other, honestly, I haven't got a chance to check it out, but there's another um, instructional on how to put the ties on the outside. Um, one other thing that I've seen, um, if you're really pressed um, and you only have elastic, is there these really um, darling like t-shirt headbands made of like the bottom of t-shirts with buttons on them. And so then the, the healthcare workers can put the elastic on the buttons and not on their, their ears. Um, also not everybody has elastic. And again, we're not going out and buying. Another great thing you can use is t-shirts. Um, t-shirts, if you cut, you know, maybe one and a half, two inch strips, and then you just stretch the heck out of them, it turns into rope. So you can either use that in this style or the, the long tie style. So that's another option if you have old t-shirts lying around. Um, so um, make sure I touched on everything. Um, one thing, um, just a note for our community, I saw a post yesterday on, on Nantucket Year Round Community, maybe some of you saw from Barry at the pharmacy, and he was saying, you know, make sure that um, our generosity to the hospital is uh, wonderful and the hospital needs the masks, but then there's also people who are working, um, like I mentioned before, people at Stop and Shop, people at restaurants who may not have masks, so reach out to um, everyone who might be interacting with the public. Um, and think about them as well. Um, so any questions? Did I miss anything? Yes, Pat, please. No, absolutely. I made a mask. Um, so um, Excellent. The other day, <laughs> and I didn't have elastic. So I used a, a hair scrunchie, a ponytail oh, thing. Oh, nice. But, um, it's very hard to go over on the machine. So you have to raise your press a foot and sort of glide it a little bit and go over it a couple of times. It, it makes it a little bit more difficult, but because I was low in elastic and I wanted to make more, I used it. My question to you um, that I wanted to know about is I wanted to make some for kids, my grandkids. And this size I figured for an adult would be too big on them. But do you have any idea of instead of six by nine, the fabric, what size it would be? I don't know the size, but I know that Deaconess, um let me type it. They had, last time I checked, and, and I could be wrong here, we'll double check, they had adult size and child size. So I'm gonna okay. type, um, it's just deaconess.com. So I'm, it's like, I'm yeah. writing it in the chat, deaconess.com. And I think they're like a big, I should probably know this, like a hospital somewhere. Um, whoops. Oh, did I goof? No, the, I did. <laughs> Technology, sorry. Send to everyone. Okay, so it's deaconess.com. It's in the chat there. I don't know if you can see that, uh, Pat. Um, but they had a PDF of a child size and adult size. If you go on participants, yeah. or no, if you go on chat, um, it'll bring up the chat box. All right, wait a minute. I have my name. <laughs> I guess I'm not doing down it right. Down at the bottom? Yep. Yeah. Do you All see right. it? At the chat? very bottom, yep. Yeah. If you click on chat, it should say Zoom group chat. I got regular chat. I'm not good at this. That's okay. I can just spell it out to you too. It's it's yeah. Uh, just easy. spell it out. Maybe. Okay. So okay. DNS is D E A 
C is in Charlie, O, N is in Nancy, yep. E is in Echo, yep. S is in Sam, S is in Sam. Dot oh, Deaconess Hospital. Yes. <laughs> so dot, really dot com, did you say? Dot, I, yeah, I think it's dot com or dot org, but yeah, that's you can Google good. Deaconess. And that's last I checked, like I said, there's, um, there's another uh, instructional how-to, that's how I learned. There's um, both of the PDFs that I sent of the different types of adult masks, and there was a child mask, and I'll go on right now, and if I can't find it, I'll send, um, I'll send one to Janet and make okay. sure that everyone has a child size. That's a really good point. Okay. That children need them. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions or confusions or something I forgot to cover? No, you did a great job. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. It's nice to get feedback. It's such a weird format. Um, Janet, do you want to add anything? Um, I see you. I, 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 oh, I, I, didn't, I don't know. Well, the first one I tried to make, um, I did, I did, I did them like the wrong side together. Oh, so I was trying to make another one, and I did the ponytail holders. I, I turned the like pillow inside out, and um, I'm kind of stuck on how these. What do you do with this? See, oh, I, okay. So I think. Oh. I <laughs> Okay, so so no, you did it right. It's just I think you left your opening in the wrong place. Oh, oh the opening is here. Or maybe you put your. Well, the first oh. one I made. Where'd it go? The first one I made, I I sewed it like the right the right side, you know. So I have two of them here. Um, okay, so it looks to me it's kind of hard to see, Sally, but it looks to me like you didn't tuck your elastic inside. When you're sewing, you shouldn't even see it. It should be tucked inside. And I know that's hard to see, but so it should be, right? Imagine this and then another piece of fabric on top. So it's just okay. you're not even it's gonna be tucked inside. You're not even you gonna do see. have it in you do have that the in, inside out. So I did it right. Yeah, it's hard to touch it. Oh, you see. I did it right the first time then, I think. Yeah. But it's the nice Oh, I have the nice side. You have the... So take your... This is easier to see, right? Here's my nice side. Here's my wrong side. My right. good side. So I'm going to put my two sides together. I just don't have enough hands. Sorry. I'm going to put my two sides together. Okay. Like this. And imagine that there's the elastic loop inside. We can't see it. Oh, okay. Because then we turn it outside. Okay. Does that make sense? So... Yeah. Inside, I think I did it right like, because I... Inside, it's going to look... Oh. Like this. And then the oh. other layer on top of it. Okay. Then what do you do? Sew the these edges underneath like this? Well, no, because when you sew the two right sides together, right? When I sew it together like this, uh -huh. it's gonna catch the elastic. And then that's how when I turn it right side out, how the elastic's on the outside. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have these fancy ponytail holder things that I these are beautiful. Have. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll work at it. <laughs> but does that make sense? I really want to make sure it's clear that you're kind of, you're sandwiching the elastic inside. It's sort of counterintuitive. Okay. So yeah, I think I did that right. It looks like you might not have left the other thing. You, I think you left the opening in the wrong space. You really want the opening on the long end. Oh, Right. Okay. So if I'm sewing, I'm like sewing like this, catching my elastic here, catching my elastic here, catching okay. my elastic here and there. And then I might leave an opening between my two fingers right here on the long. Yeah, I did have a, a teeny little opening. Here. Yeah, you want to be able to turn it inside out. Don't, you know, make it yeah. easy for yourself. Okay. And then when you turn it all the right side, that's when these sort of magically pop out. Okay. Yeah, I did something wrong, but. It's hard to I haven't so I haven't sewed it enough. Again? Can you hold it up again? I just want to just want to see. I think you sewed under. It looks like you sewed your elastics under. You just left the openings on the end. I think that's still salvageable. I think if you tuck your short ends. Yeah. Oh, well, I was thinking if I go like this, it might be a kid's mask. <laughs> <laughs> or leave the elastic out and tuck the edges in. Well, the elastic will come out because it's like, you know, it's, right. I could tuck this under and then, you know, then I got to figure out how to do the pleats. I, I'm, I'm not, I haven't sewed in like a million years. So it, I mean, I, I can't, I'm trying to figure out how to even thread my sewing machine, but I did get it finally. <laughs> so. 
um, okay, well, I'll thank you. You're, you're welcome. Did you got the sewing machine threaded? Yeah, I did. <laughs> you did. Okay, awesome. So I should have asked that from the beginning. I just wasn't sure where everyone was at. Yeah. But, um, but can you, you don't, they don't have a recording of this, do you? Where you can I go think so. I think, Janet, are you recording this? And Pat, I see your hand. I just want to ask yeah. Janet really quick. Um, right. Yes, we are recording this. So you'll be able to, I'm going to try to get them posted up onto our YouTube channel and then I'll share the link on the Athenaeum page. That would be great because then I could go backwards. <laughs> yeah. And also if you're visual, the step <laughs> See what I did wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're visual too, Sally, sometimes the step-by-step -step helps too, like the written yeah. I find right. that easier to follow. But thank you. You're welcome. Maybe I'll see you in the woods. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Pat, All did right. you have a question? I just wanted to give you one more side comment. This was made from an old Maurice Toggery shirt, man's shirt. How that local. No, That's no, awesome. No longer was serving. As, the, the neck was torn and everything. The sleeves weren't good, but we found some spaces that we could make a mask out of. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. really creative. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of at um, finding my, my resource for, for cotton is usually the take it or leave it. So I'm having to yeah. run it around the house, but that's a really good uh, resource the button up shirt. So that's something else you can use, right? If you need anything, I might have it too. How did you do the pleats is what I wanted to know. Like, okay, so the pleats are... You said that some people do little black dots. Yeah, you can do little black dots at, at um, <clears throat> intervals, you know, like you could do doot, 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 and then kind of use that to pinch it. Okay, I have my iron right here too, so. And fold it over. And okay. I just sort of eyeball it. I make a, it's really hard to see, sorry. Okay, no, I can see like good. Like right, that, perfect. and then another one. And then I find if I've gathered up too much fabric, I just do it again, but, um, you okay. know. Sounds Tom good. uses the dots, he's been making masks. So he uses the, he finds that's kind of a nice, um, and I think the numbers Pat I gave you when we looked at the finished one was like one and a half, three and four and a half. Right. But if that doesn't work, please, you know, definitely give some. Yeah, I was eyeballing it. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? No, Last thank thing? you. Any other resources you need? Um, no. I think I'm good. I just got to oh. take my first mask apart that I did the wrong way. <laughs> All right, well, good luck, everybody. And stay, right, thank safe you. And stay healthy. You too. Bye. You too. Take care. Bye-bye.